Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mariana Templin, and I'm here today to talk to you about encryption and why you shouldn't use it. Just kidding. Sort of. LOL. <laughs> OK, so first of all, what is encryption? Um, at its most basic, encryption is the act of encoding a human readable slash plain text message into a human unreadable cipher. Um, let me give you a very short history of encryption. Encryption has been around for thousands of years. Um, early encryption was based in lexicographical slash linguistic patterning. Um, however, with the advent of modern computing, we realized that computers were really good at breaking these linguistic patterns. So in around uh, the 1930s, modern encryption switched over to be much more mathematical um, slash algorithmic. So how does modern encryption work? Um, it depends. What do you want to do? Are you trying to securely store sensitive data? Or are you trying to send a private message over a network? Let's talk about the first um, first. So encryption for storage. Uh, let's say you have something that is a sensitive piece of information, such as a password. Um, you take that password, you put it through a hashing algorithm. Um, this is SHA-1, which is of the SHA family, which is a popular um, and pretty common algorithm for hashing um, functions. So you take the password, put it through SHA-1, and you get out this hash, and that is the actual hash that you get when you put in password123 into SHA-1. So what is the use of this? Um, basically, if you're trying to store sensitive data on the browser side, somebody enters their password, you would take that password, you would um, hash it right then and there. You would send that hashed password over the network, and that hashed pa password is what you'd be storing in the database. Later, when that same user would log in, you'd take their password um, on the browser side, hash it again, send it over the network as a hash, and then compare the two hashes to one another, and you'd never actually be sending or storing um, a user-sensitive information. So a good hash function should be consistent. Um, the same input should always produce the same output. Um, it should be collision-free, meaning that different input um, should always produce different output. Um, it should be agnostic to the length of the input, so it doesn't matter if your string is 5 characters long or 500 characters long. Um, if the hashing function is supposed to produce a 16-character hash, it will always produce a 16-character hash. Um, and it should be computationally hard to break, meaning that um, with modern computers, it should be so hard to decode the hash that it is uh, practically impossible to decode it. Um, an aside to this would be that if we ever actually figure out um, quantum computing, um, we would very easily be able to break all existing hash functions with um, quantum computings. But quantum computers would also offer different options for um, encoding uh, as well. So that's one example of encryption, right? OK, well, I lied. Um, I have a confession to make which is that a hashing function isn't technically encryption, but it falls under the wider umbrella of cryptography. So technically, um, encryption is the act of encoding a message with the end goal of decrypting the message. With a hashing function, you never actually want to decode the hash. Um, however, it's not uncommon to see the two used interchangeably, and I was definitely confused about it when I began researching this, so I just wanted to sort of talk about them together. So what is actually encryption? First, let's talk about sort of the most basic type of encryption. It's symmetric encryption. With symmetric encryption, you have person A wants to send a message to person B. <laughs> There's a message. Hi. Um, so sending the message. But unbeknownst to me, somebody truly evil, Martin Screlly, AKA Pharma Bro, is listening in on my network. So person A sends the message to person B, thinking that everything went fine. But Martin Scarelli heard this message. So what do we do? We add keys to this. So person A has a key, and they send that key, same key, to person B. Now, when person A sends the message, they use a special type of algorithm. And in the algorithm, they are plugging in the key and the message um, and getting the decoded message. So this algorithm that's used is similar to a hashing function in that it's a 
basically a one-way function, except, and it's very computationally hard to reverse, except if you have this key. There's a special backdoor that this algorithm provides, and the only way that's accessible is with this key. So if we both have the same key, I send the um, encrypted message over the network to person B. Person B has the same key, is able to decode the message, receive it, get high. So pretty neat, right? So what's the problem? Um, we're basically making a key assumption here, um, no pun intended, in that um, when person A is sending over the key to person B initially, they're assuming that Martin Screlly hasn't started listening in on the network. But if Martin Screlly has started listening in on the network at this point, there's nothing to stop him from grabbing that key at that point, so that when I'm sending over my message, which I think is encoded, um, Martin Screlly has the key and he can decode it just as easily as person B can. So what's a possible solution to this? Um, something called asymmetric encryption. Um, asymmetric encryption was invented in the 1970s as a solution to this problem. Um, it's also known as public key encryption. Um, and let's talk about how that works. So with asymmetric encryption, um, person A has a key and person B has a key, but they're different keys. Additionally, person B has a lock um, or a special algorithm that can only be unlocked with this key, that pers person A is the only person that has this key. So instead of just sending out a message from the beginning, what I'm going to be doing is person A sends the open lock or the algorithm to person B. Person B then takes that lock, takes the message that they want to encode, encodes that message, and sends it back to person A. Person A is the only person that has the key to decode this message. So Martin Scarelli can't listen in. Um, perfect. Sounds pretty good, right? So a mini recap. Um, encryption is an old technology that's been around for a long time, and it's been useful to humans for a long time. Um, miraculously, it's a technology that has evolved with us into the computer age. Um, three common types of modern cryptography, and notice I say cryptography here and not encryption, are one-way hashing functions for um, data storage, symmetric encryption decryption best used over um, networks that you know are secure, and asymmetric encryption decryption. So why did I warn you against encryption at the beginning of this talk? Well, because in computer security, a system is only as secure as its weakest point. Um, even in this case, we have a problem, which is that I'm sending out this open lock Let's say that Martin Screlly gets the open lock. He pretends that he's person B. He encodes a message and sends it back to person A. And I think that the message is from person B. I open the message. Maybe it contains malware, and I don't know because I'm not looking for that. I'm expecting a message from person B, and my system's been infected. Um, so you can see, even with this sort of cool solution, there are gaps in security. Um, so where does that leave us? Encryption is basically reflective of the larger state of web security right now. It's sort of at an awkward stage where we're realizing the complexity of the challenges that face web security. And we're sort of realizing that to really um, approach them in a meaningful way, we have to implement a more cohesive solution. Um, so I'm going to leave you with some additional resources. This first um, link is an article that basically everybody and their uh, mother points to when they're talking about encryption, and um, specifically encryption in JavaScript. And it's just sort of saying that encryption in JavaScript is useless, and, um, but they're specifically talking about encryption, web encryption, and just how problematic it is. Um, certainly, if you're wanting to do anything locally or on a secure network, um, go ahead and use encryption. And then these next two links um, sort of are reflective of this like awkward in-between stage of like web security that we're in. This um, Crypto.js is one of the most popular cryptographic JavaScript libraries, but it's sort of defunct and it hasn't been updated in a while. But that being said, it still has like way more downloads than any of the other cryptographic libraries that I found. And then the next um, link is an crypto API that Mozilla is developing, but it is um, 
in development. It's still an experimental technology, but that's definitely something to keep an eye on if you're interested um, in encryption and cryptography and sort of um, how it will continue to evolve. Um, and then this last link is um, a link to an actual application that is an end-to-end -end encryption application. And it's just a cool place to look as a developer because it's open source. So you can look at the code and see how um, an end-to-end -end encryp encryption app might actually be implemented. Um, and it's, of course, much more nuanced than the examples that I was able to give you earlier. Um, so yeah, that's ma basically my introduction to um, encryption. Um, thank you very much.